let's take a look at a type of problem that some students have trouble with, and these involve more than one moving object. For example, a gazelle being chased by, say, a cheetah. And so to start out, we draw a simple sketch with a number line here. And so we have the cheetah. I'm going to put it at the origin. And we're told the gazelle is six meters in front of the cheetah when the cheetah starts to move. And so let's say the gazelle was moving along, in this case, 15 meters per second, and ran past the hidden cheetah, which then jumped out after him when he was six meters away, and then the cheetah started chasing the gazelle. And let's say the cheetah starts out from rest, but the cheetah can accelerate pretty um, well, and I'm going to say his acceleration is about nine meters per second per second, which is not too unreasonable for a cheetah. And so at first, the gazelle is going faster than the cheetah. After one second, the cheetah is now going nine meters per second, still slower than the gazelle. After two seconds, the cheetah is going 18. And so the cheetah is already starting to catch up with the gazelle after two seconds. And so it will start to gain on him and eventually catch the gazelle and be able to eat. And so a typical series of questions might be, how much time until the cheetah catches the gazelle? And how far does the cheetah travel in this time? And so to start out, we have our sketch. We want to indicate a positive direction. That'll be more important on problems where objects are moving in different directions, but we'll do it here. And I'm going to say the cheetah's at the origin. You can make the gazelle the origin if you want. That's up to you. And we want to be real careful as we uh, assign the variables for what we're given here. We have information about the cheetah. For example, the initial velocity of the cheetah is zero, and the initial velocity of the gazelle is 15 meters per second. And notice both are V0. I've put a G here by the gazelle to differentiate the two. You could then put a C here and call that V0 cheetah, then V0 gazelle. And the initial position of the cheetah then would be zero meters, and the initial position of the gazelle was given as six meters. The acceleration of the cheetah we said would be nine, and the acceleration of the gazelle we're going to say is zero. He's just going to go that 15 meters per second, uh, hoping the cheetah gets tired. To proceed, we need an equation that will tell us where an object is as a function of time. And we have such an equation that works for constant acceleration, which is what we're dealing with here. And it says my position is my initial position plus my initial velocity times the time plus any additional position I get due to acceleration or if I was slowing down less acceleration. And so we've seen this one before. We just need to apply this for each object. And so for the cheetah, x cheetah, in other words, the position of the cheetah is given by its initial position, zero, plus its initial velocity times the time, zero, plus one-half its acceleration times the time squared. And so the equation for the cheetah is 4.5, or nine-halves if you want, t squared. We can do the same thing for the gazelle. And so x gazelle, where the gazelle is at any time in the future, is given by its initial position, which is not zero. He's six meters from the origin. And his initial velocity is also not zero. It's 15, but his acceleration is zero. And so the equation telling where the gazelle is as a function of time is 6 plus 15t. And so now I have these two equations. And the question is, when does xc equal xg? So we need to set these two equations equal to each other and then solve for the time. We're trying to find their intersection. We'll talk more about that in a moment. And so I'm going to erase the page here, and we'll put up our equations and continue with our solution. And so... Recalling the cheetah's 
equation, 4.5t squared, and the Gazelle's equation, 6 plus 15t. Uh, we are setting these two equal to each other and solving for a time. And so I get 4.5t squared minus 15t minus 6 equals 0. All I did was um, add, uh, subtract 15t from both sides and 6 from both sides. I always like to have, when I'm setting up a quadratic, I like to have my a term be positive. That avoids some common errors that I notice students making. And so a is 4.5, b is negative 15, and c is negative 6. We need the quadratic formula uh, to solve for this. And so time is going to be, if you remember the quadratic formula, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and then the whole thing over 2a. And so in this problem, t equals minus b, so it's minus a negative 15, so I get a positive 15, plus or minus, there are going to be two solutions to b squared, so that'd be 15 squared minus 4ac, but notice c is negative, a is positive, so that's going to be plus 4ac. And then again, the whole thing all over 2a. And if you work this out, you get a positive solution of 3.7 seconds and a negative solution of 0.4. Uh, why a negative solution? Well, if the cheetah was somehow going back in time, uh, this would have been when the gazelle passed it, but it wasn't accelerating before time zero, and so it just doesn't make any sense in this case. And so we throw the negative solution out, and our answer is 3.7 seconds. Do we know if this is right or not? Well, we can find out. All we have to do is put that into our two equations and if we're correct, we should get the same position. In other words, xc at this time, 4.5, 3.7 squared, should be the same thing as the gazelle's number. And so I get 61.6 meters, and x gazelle is 6 plus 15 times 3.7, and I get... 61.5 meters, and so essentially the same. I rounded off a little. That's really 3.69, but that's fine to round. So even though these are difficult problems, there's an advantage. You can find out if you did it right or not. And some problems are only ask for the time. It always pays to put it back into your original equations and figure out if you did it right. Let's take another look at what we're doing here, and I'm sure you've dealt with this before. What we've really done is we found an intersection of two lines. This is the um, graph of the cheetah's motion. And so if you were to graph this out, this is x cheetah is 4.5t squared, not surprisingly, uh, parabola. And then this is the gazelle's line, which, since he's going at a constant velocity, is a straight line. And so that's 6 plus our 15t. And we found the intersection, which was about uh, 3.7 seconds. And we found that occurred at about 61.6, 62 meters. Notice the other intersection, which occurs before time zero, uh, doesn't make any sense in this problem. We'll give this one a try. You can play around with it. What if the gazelle was going faster? How much time until the cheetah catches it now? Uh, and you also might check how fast is the cheetah going after this time? Is that a reasonable number? Look up uh, top cheetah speed, see if I have something reasonable. 